and Susan. Welcome to Tea and Games. The tea today is Yorkshire Gold. I may seem a little bit more subdued for this video. This is going to be a really short video. And I keep saying the word video. <sighs> Stuff has happened. And welcome to new subscribers. I am so sorry. This video is not going to be quite as much fun as my videos usually are. We have been having some not fun along with our fun on the weekends. And by we, I mean my husband Robert and I. We are casual weekend board gamers. Um, I do the videos. Robert plays the games with me. <laughs> Anyhow... Stuff happened. Uh, the washing machine broke. Um, and um, the cap veneer thingy on one of my teeth shattered. Um, which, I mean, it was a repair from an injury years ago, but it just went to pieces. And that was kind of alarming. Nothing hurts. So I'm okay there. Um... And then Sunday morning, I was kind of ill because something I ate Saturday night did not agree with me. So the weekend was kind of rough. Um, so Saturday morning, we, after, you know, we watched our Saturday morning cartoons because we're just big kids, but then we had to start like, researching washing machines in case we had to repair, in case it wasn't repairable. Uh, and then we had to make calls to washing machine repair places to see if there was any hope of anybody fixing it anytime in the reasonably foreseeable future um, and when they could come out. And then there was also well, you know, we actually kind of got to wash clothes, too. So there was the whole maneuvering to wash clothes elsewhere. Um, and, um, and so that was like Saturday morning, like first thing. And, well, we didn't get the, we didn't start on the clothes washing until later, and we did a little bit Friday night because it was starting to go out Friday night. So we took some and washed up Friday and then Saturday, everything really kind of went to rack and ruin. And then, so I'm in Discord and one of the Discords I'm in is the Button Shy Discord. And that's where I found out that the thing that I had been hearing about in the Button Shy Discord for a while now is actually a real thing that had happened. Tussie Mussy, one of their wallet games, a very popular wallet game, which is designed by Elizabeth Hargrave, who designed Wingspan and Mariposas, and also the Fox Experiment, um, among other things, I think. Um, Tussie Mussy, the base game, which is a wallet game from Buttonshy, and uh, expansions, wallets also from Buttonshy, or not wallets, I think, like little uh, sleeve game things. The whole thing, the base game and every single expansion is now in a box that is available from Barnes & Noble here in the U.S. It is available on the Barnes & Noble website, and it is in available in a whole bunch of Barnes & Noble stores. I know this because in the Button Shy Discord, everybody was piling in saying like, it's in our store. It's in X number of stores within 50 miles of us. It's in 26 stores around here. And it, it was just, it was just kind of spreading through. So that was this little pop of joy in the midst of Saturday being kind of stressful because of the whole, we need to wash clothes and the washing machine is broken and we got to get a hold of the washing repair guy and he got to order parts and we've got to schedule them to come out and all of that. We went out, it wasn't at our close Barnes & Noble. We actually lived not that far from a Barnes & Noble. It was like the next further. So we had a little bit of drive, but it was a Barnes & Noble we'd been meaning to go to because we hadn't been there to that one in a while. So Saturday, we just said, right, 
Okay, we've done as much as we can on the washing thing. We can we can do another load of clothes later. We're just going to go out and get a game. So we just like went out and got a game. I don't have Tussie Mussy. I have a bunch of button shy games, but I didn't have this one. So we got this, and we basically binge played this Saturday afternoon, or a good chunk of Saturday afternoon. And it plays very fast. It's a lot of fun. It plays good at two, but it can play up to four. A lot of button shy games are one or two player games, though they do have some games for more people, but this one will play up to four. And we played it at two, and it's uh, it's got this kind of like bluffing detection sort of thing where you're trying basically to figure out what the other players are doing. Um, you draw two cards, look at them, and you decide which card you're going to offer to your opponent face down and which card you're going to offer face up. And then your opponent gets to pick one and you get the other one. So it's kind of like a little iffy. You're going like, if I put this face down, if I offer this, then they're going to go for the face down card. But if I put that face down card face up, then they're going to want the face up card. So, I mean, it's like, and how do I do this to where I get the card that I actually want? Tricky, very tricky, um, but a lot of fun. We played through the base game a few times and Robert was just like always winning because he's kind of bluffing sort of games. He's really good at, he actually, he beats me every time when we play Stew, which is another button shy game. And that's a bluffing game. And he actually called Stew once in the middle of a Tussie Mussy game. So yeah, that was, it was a lot of fun. And then after we got the hang of the base game, we're kind of eyeing each other going like, yeah, okay, let's start rolling in the expansion. So we rolled in the orange expansion first. Played a game of that, we're going like, okay, this is good. Orange makes it even better. Then we rolled in the greenery expansion. We're going like, oh, this is very good. We're going to keep doing this with orange and greenery. And I do think that if you've got Tussie Mussy and you don't have expansions for it, I feel like orange and greenery are must-have. I really feel like that they they fill out the game really, really well. Um, I kind of feel like this game actually plays better with a few more cards than, than the 18 that it starts off with. Uh, the next expansion that we put in, uh, and we played this one on Sunday morning, I remember, um, even though I wasn't feeling well. <laughs> A game you can play even when you're not feeling well um, is the, the one with the ribbons. The ribbon expansion, these are essentially gold cards. They're not rolled into the deck that you're using. You draw one for each round. Each round you draw a new gold card and that will give you extra points and kind of mitigate some of the damage that some of the other cards can do. Like the greenery cards and some of the orange cards, they will not help you always depending upon what you've got and what the other player has or other players plural um this game is going to be real interesting with multiple players i'm kind of looking forward to giving that a try um but it also depends upon what gold cards you've got because some of them just kind of give you extra points for certain kinds of things um so we did that. The other two expansions are for the solo game, and we did not play solo, either one of us. Uh, I will get around to that one of these days. Solo is not really my thing. I will never play anything solo if I can play it with another person, and since I live with another person who likes to play games, I have a hard time getting around to solo-ish stuff. Um, but yeah, they have the Flower Shop Solo expansion in here. And then another expansion that goes with that expansion, which adds customers. So, nifty, huh? And this is, this is a nice size box. It's small. It's $19 right now from Barnes & Noble. That's like the regular base price. If you're a Barnes & Noble member, you get a discount. Uh, but that's a nice price, a nice small little box. This would make a good small gift come Christmas time is what I'm thinking. And I have given Button Shy for Christmas. As wallet games go, they're like good stocking stuffers, but a box, a box could be a good secret Santa sort of thing. 
So look for this in your local Barnes & Noble if you live someplace that has a local Barnes & Noble. And if you don't, look for it on their web, if you don't, comma, look for it on their website. So yeah, that was a nice little redeeming thing. And then the whole tooth thing happened Saturday evening and freaked me out. Um, oh yeah, Saturday I noted we also played one game of cartographers because we were waiting for a call back from the washing machine repair person. So we just sat down and played a game of cartographers while we were waiting for them to call us back. And if you've ever waited for a repairman for anything, you know that you can fit a game of cartographers in while you're waiting. It was cartographers heroes, uh, no special maps. Um, we just used like the flip side of one of the uh, regular sheets that we had started on the front of before. So yeah, we did that while we were waiting for, and then we did Tussie Mussie in the afternoon, then Sunday morning. I mean, it's no point in calling the dentist Saturday evening or Sunday morning, right? So that didn't happen until today, Monday, and this video may not go up until Tuesday because there is more madness on the way. Um, this is, and then on Sunday, when I started feeling better, uh, we played a game of Tessie Messy Mouse. Still feel a little iffy, but I did well on that. I actually won it even though I was ill. <laughs> uh, then Sunday afternoon, we played, uh, and I have this up here, and I talked about it, and then I did not show the box, Cartographer's Heroes. I am not a professional board game person. This is just my pencil set. So... I'm sorry. There are a lot of really good content creators out there that do everything slick and pro. I'm not one of those. This is like average board gamer stuff. I have a bunch of other button shy wallets that I got because the button shy uh, spring reprint campaign uh, fulfilled. And I planned on playing those this weekend. Seasons of Rice and the Jasmine and Ginger expansion. Skulls of Sedlick, which I have never played. Um, and Timony. Um, and um, Cow Tiger Santa Claus, the travel game that's been out of print for a long time. I actually got two of these because so many people posted in the Discord about how they had worn theirs out years ago. And it stays out of print forever, so that's why I got two. I got the Numsters Infinity Expansion, which I haven't played yet. Numsters being a solo game. Also solo, which I haven't played yet, at the helm with the Lazarette and Port Amalga expansions. And another solo game, The Last Lighthouse. So those are what we didn't play. But we did get in a play of Comic Hunter's Sunday afternoon, which was a lot of fun, even though I lost so badly. I mean, you would not believe how badly I tanked at this game. I tried a new strategy, and we will not be doing this strategy again, I can tell you that. Uh, we tried a new, I tried a new strategy. Robert basically played like I did last time, um, but I tried trying to have a few a few high value collections instead of a whole bunch of smaller collections and boy that did not work out at all i mean it's possible that it's possible that this could i suppose work in some game but i had a lot of trouble getting the cards that i needed to make the expansions big enough to really pay off with big points and i just couldn't quite get it right over that line to knock it into like the third highest bracket. And then I also had a lot of trouble paying for laying down so many cards. So I was like getting cards to pay for the cards that I was laying down, but also having trouble getting enough cards to lay down. So yeah, it didn't go very well. And the highlights did not save me this time. The last time I scored crazy points on highlights. And I did well on highlights this time, but I was in such a deep hole that was not going to help. So yeah, that strategy did not work. And I think if this were, if I were playing this with say three or four players, I wouldn't have even been able to attempt this because 
the cards would have been spread out amongst more people so that there would have been fewer cards available to try to make a really big collection thing for one particular superhero. Um, but we had a lot of fun playing it. And as I said, I was feeling better by then in su on Sunday. And I mentioned more madness coming. I may not be doing another video for at least a week, probably a little bit more than a week because, okay, um, tomorrow I'm getting the tooth fixed and um, then the day after tomorrow, Wednesday, because um, I went to the nurse this morning, but they can't do everything today. But um, then Wednesday, we have workmen coming to rip out flooring and move stuff in the living room. And we're having flooring put in and the living room walls painted and new trim and, and new blinds and window thingies. And it's just, so that's going to take about a week. So it's going to be a little stressful around here. Uh, and it has been this past weekend a little stressful. But, you know, in the middle of it all, we could play games. I mean, we didn't play anything like big and heavy because if you're having a stressful weekend, your time and concentration is not really going to be there. So you want to play something that is going to play fairly quickly, something that is fairly light. Comic Hunters is a fairly light game. Um... But you know something? It was really immersive. I mean, there was just kind of, I was kind of stressed by the time Sunday afternoon went on because there had just been kind of a cascade of things going on that was not good. Um, but, um, but just figuring out things and just looking at all the comics and trying to figure out, okay, I'm going to get this and I'm going to pay for it with that. But then... I really wanted to collect that one, but yeah, I'm not going to be able to do that. But this next thing coming up, I'm going to get a whole bunch of those. I know it. And those will be high value. So I could pick up some that I can use to pay for the others. And I mean, I was just so absorbed in the game that I utterly forgot about all of the bad stuff that had been happening. And that's a really good thing. And board games are good escape. They're fun, and they kind of take you away from the everyday for a little while, even if it's like bluffing over flowers. But I would say if you're using either board games or video games to escape from your life all the time, that that would probably not be a good thing. You should maybe use some of those skills that you learned with games to set about figuring out how to make your life not something you want to escape from. But sometimes stuff happens, like, and it always tends to happen in clusters, doesn't it? It's just like, like a whole bunch of stuff just happens at once. Um, and it's never a whole bunch of good stuff happening at once, it seems like. Or at least it seems that way right now because stuff is happening. So, yeah, it's, it's if you're just doing it to get away for a little while, that's that's kind of a good thing. And I really feel like all board gamers, even those super serious, heavy, we only play Euro game board gamers, need to cultivate a small, select collection of light, small, fast, fun, and absorbing games that you can play when it all just goes wrong and you just don't have either the time or the concentration to play something big and long and heavy. Uh, everybody needs to have like a bunch of small, fast games that they can play that will give them that little pop of joy. Uh, card games are good for this. Card games, you can pack a lot of fun into small card games. So that's something to keep in mind. But yeah, it's kind of been a thing around here. And that's why this video is short. Although I've talked so much, it is no longer short. But it's been a thing. And the game part of the thing has been fun. So I will see y'all next time around the table. And I can't say exactly when that will be, but I will get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, drop a comment. Say hello. It's been fun. This at least. Bye. <laughs>